Good morning, and in Christ's name, welcome to Washington Memorial Chapel, the Episcopal Church in Valley Forge. We're especially excited to welcome everybody who is visiting today for the first time or worshiping with us via the webcast, and for those folks who are here today um, to celebrate with us the baptism of Stella Rose Whitaker. A baptism is always a wonderful day in the life of the church, and we're so glad that you have come to join us. Uh, if this is your first visit with us, please do fill out one of the visitor's cards located in the pew pocket in front of you uh, so that we can keep you up to date with all of the exciting events that happen here. The visitor's card is also a very good way to sign up for the weekly newsletter that goes out on Fridays. So if you aren't signed up for that, um, do fill it out and drop it in the plate uh, post haste or scan the QR code on the front of your bulletin. In the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are invited to receive the Holy Eucharist at the appointed time. Uh, the instructions on how to do that are in your bulletin. If you're not at that point in your journey of faith uh, at this point in time, uh, you're still invited to come forward, receive a blessing, simply cross your arms over your chest. The priest will bless you because you have blessed us with your presence here today. If you're interested in learning more about Holy Baptism, which is full uh, Christian initiation by water and the Holy Spirit, uh, please do speak with any of the clergy. After Mass, they will be delighted to answer any questions you may have. Our mini Carillon concert series has begun for the spring, and it will continue uh, from now through June on Sunday afternoons at 1.30, 2.30, and 3.30. Uh, these are fun little 20-minute assortments of uh, popular music, old and new, and um, interesting tunes expertly rendered by Doug Geffert, our caroloneer, on the 58-bell carillon that graces our bell tower. If you're enjoying a snack in the cabin shop or uh, walking around the chapel grounds or the park, do plan to pause and enjoy the music. There are going to be very many events coming up in the life of the parish over the next few weeks. Uh, in particular, I would draw your attention to French Alliance Day, which will be on the afternoon of Sunday, May the 5th. And we are in great need of volunteers to ensure that this much anticipated event is made one to remember. Uh, please be sure to check the Friday newsletter for details and uh, to sign up on that. Following this service, there will be a festive reception in Patriots Hall through this door um, and the Lafayette Room. Um, simply uh, follow the smell of good coffee and the sound of conversation, and we'll be delighted to get to know you better uh, over there. As many of you may know, the uh, slate of candidates for the 28th presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church uh, has been released. Uh, we have been asked by the House of Bishops to remember in prayer um, in particular, Bishop Barker of Nebraska, Bishop Rowe of Northwestern Hi, Pennsylvania and Western New York, like Bishop Italian Wright donkeys. of Atlanta, and our own Bishop Gutierrez uh, here in the That's Diocese okay. of Pennsylvania okay. is one of the candidates. So, of course, we are a people of prayer, and I am sure that uh, you will remember them in prayer as they pray for us each day. Hello, good morning. Hi. And now let us take a moment and prepare ourselves <laughs> in heart and mind and body and spirit to worship the Lord Welcome in the beauty of holiness. It's a little tight, but there's also benches along the sides. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the chapel. Hey, welcome, guys. Good to see you. Oh, I forgot my hat. No, I didn't. Did I forget it? Yeah, you did. We'll just, we'll just forget about them today. Can I use one of those for the Thank you, sir.
in our cycle of prayer for the states, today we pray for the 19th state admitted to the Union, the state of Indiana. Let us pray. For as much, O God, as in open Indiana, thou hast matched the boundless sky upon the wide, unfettered earth, allow the Spirit's unbroken vision. Fruitful hast thou made her soil, let thy people's lives be equally endowed. Firm as the limestone undergirding, so may her building be. Thus may thy benediction come to her learning and her life, and to all whose livelihood is cast inside the huger boundary. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord who has all to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son did manifest Himself to His disciples in the breaking of bread, open, we pray Thee, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold Him in all His redeeming work. Through the same, Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with Thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The epistle is from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
the continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. So begins the lesson which we've just heard, the gospel story. It's the third resurrection narrative in St. Luke's Gospel. And it's similar to all the other resurrection narratives that we have in the New Testament. They describe the disciples seeing the resurrection as being fearful, frightened, startled, terrified, wondering, as if they're seeing a ghost. And St. Luke describes it perfectly. Even in their joy, they were still disbelieving. One of the things that characterizes all the resurrection appearances is the fact that the risen Lord is not recognized by his own disciples, his own followers. Now that's especially evident in today's reading because this reading follows immediately after the two disciples on the road to Emmaus have come back to Jerusalem and they've met the apostles who are meeting with those around them. And they report on how they had seen Jesus, the risen Lord, in the breaking of the bread. And they are told that the Lord is risen. Peter has seen him. And then we have this story immediately following. And it raises the question, why in the world would the disciples on the road to Emmaus, who had had seen Jesus in the breaking of bread, why did they not recognize the risen Lord when he appears again? And it runs like a watermark. Not being able to recognize the presence of God in our midst runs like a watermark through the whole readings of all the readings that we have for the resurrection. Remember Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene standing outside the tomb. Mary Magdalene is approached by the risen Lord. And she thinks it's the gardener. Somebody come to see about the petunias or something like that. She simply doesn't recognize him. And then we have the apostles in the upper room. They have locked the doors for fear of the Jews. And Jesus comes and stands before them. I've always wondered what they were thinking when they saw him. They had just abandoned him in the hour of his need. And what is St. Peter thinking? St. Peter has denied even knowing him. And there he is standing before them. And he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And my favorite is the the disciples who go fishing. In Matthew's Gospel, we have the disciples. Peter says, I'm going fishing. They go into a boat, and they're fishing and not catching anything. And they see a stranger on the shore. And that stranger on the shore is identified by the beloved disciple as the Messiah, as Jesus. 
And St. Peter, filled with excitement, gets dressed, dives into the water to go be with his Lord. Who but St. Peter would first get dressed and then dive into the water to go see the Lord? What I'm pointing out to here is there is confusion. There's turmoil, there's fear, there's anxiety. There's an inability to lay hold of what's happened. And so it is that it becomes the business of the risen Lord to answer these questions, which is an ancient question. When in the Old Testament, when, the, when Jacob wrestles with the angel, he comes to realize God was in this place and I did not know it. The presence of God unrecognized, unknown by us, is something that runs all through the Hebrew scripture and the New Testament, and we find it here. And so it is the business of the risen Lord to explain to them, to identify himself, to really ask again the question that was asked earlier in the Gospels when they were at Caesarea Philippi. When they were at Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asks his apostles, who do people say that I am? And they answer, well, some think you're John the Baptist. Some think you're Elijah. Some think you're one of the prophets. They answer with the usual suspects, the usual kinds of responses that you would expect people of that time and age to answer. Now, I like to think that there's a long pause after Jesus says, and who do you say that I am? I like to think there's an, an uncomfortable silence that follows for a long time. We don't know if there is, but finally, St. Peter speaks up and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and bone have not revealed this to you, but God has revealed this to you. There's that question being once again put forward. The risen Lord needs to deal with those whole question of who he is and how he can be recognized. Essentially, in the resurrection narratives, Jesus has to connect the apostles the witnesses of the resurrection, connect them with what they should have known, to connect them with the words that he had spoken, to connect them with the prophecies that were present in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, in the, in the, in the prophecies of Isaiah, and in the writings of Moses, all those things which point out the coming of the Messiah. He has to remind them of the things that he himself has told them. He has to basically reconnect the apostles with their own traditions that should have informed them as to who he was. Now, I believe that many of us today are somewhat disconnected. I believe that, the, I know that the highest, uh, the fastest growing religious affiliation are nuns. I don't mean Roman Catholic nuns. I mean nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Most people on today, a growing number, an ever-growing number of people, when asked what their religious affiliation is, they put none. It's not that they're not religious. It's not that they're not spiritual. You know, I have Gen Zs in my own family, and I know that they're very spiritual, but they're not, in, they're not into the traditions and the stories and the foundational things that the church needs to teach. I'm reminded of a book that I read by Somerset Mom. W. Somerset Mom wrote a book called The Razor's Edge. And it's a book about a young man who experienced the trauma of World War I. And having done so, he began to question the meaning of life, the value of life, the purpose of life. He began to question his own meaning, his own value, his own purpose. And in doing so, he went on a sort of a a, a lifelong pilgrimage, trying to find the meaning and purpose of his life. He worked in a minefield. He worked in a, in a coal mine. He worked as a stevedore on a ship. He went to India to meet with the, the Lama. He went to Asia. Finally, he went to monasteries, and he studied under spiritual advisors in a monastery, trying to find the meaning in his life because he felt disconnected from any sense of meaning. And one of the old priests in the monastery said, I've seen many like you before and many like you have come. You are a deeply religious man who doesn't believe in God. A deep
deeply religious man who doesn't believe in God. And I think in many ways that characterizes so many in our time today. But it also characterizes in some way those who witnessed the first resurrection, the resurrection appearances of our Lord. Deeply religious, deeply spiritual, but needing to be reconnected with all those things that had gone on before. The church has always been dealing with the connection between Jesus of Nazareth and the traditions and the foundational stories of the Hebrew prophets, which for many centuries and many struggles have revealed the sense of who Jesus really is. Christology, the nature and meaning of the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Christology, it's a theological word, so fasten your seatbelts. We have to talk a little bit about theology now. We have to talk about how important this is. The incarnation is the foundation of Christology. The incarnation barely means primarily that the light of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the creative ability of God was made flesh and therefore visible in the person of Jesus. That's what the incarnation is. Jesus is not another prophet. Jesus is not another Elijah. Jesus is not John the Baptist somehow come back as a ghost, as the people thought at Treasury of Philippi. No, he's something new. He is the incarnation of the active presence of God in human flesh. That's who he is. When we come to the resurrection, the same principle has to apply. Jesus is the continuing incarnation of the continuing light of God, now enfleshed in the risen Lord. And that's why the bodily resurrection is so important for the life of the church. The life of the church is founded by the idea of the bodily resurrection of Jesus. It's something new, something that happens outside of what my mother used to call the settled order of nature, something powerful, something that's hard to understand and put our hands around, but yet something very much there. And it's very important to the church to hold that position because our salvation depends on it. Our salvation, the freedom from our sins, depends upon God who comes into the world in human form, takes upon himself the debt of our sins so that we can be forgiven and therefore saved. That's what the incarnation is, that's what resurrection is, and that's really salvation is really the fact that the church is in the salvation business. Salvation is rather like having a debt that you cannot pay. Imagine that you've maxed out all your credit cards and you've mortgaged your house to the hilt and you now have $2 million in debt. I almost did that with credit cards myself some years ago. I, I know the feeling, it's a panicky feeling. What in the world am I going to do? Imagine you're in that kind of debt and you can't get out of it. Well, if a benefactor comes, a loving benefactor, who assumes the debt, takes the debt upon himself or herself, takes that debt and pays it. That's what salvation fundamentally is. Salvation is God assuming human form, assuming the debt of human sin, taking it upon himself and paying the price to bring us new life. And that's why all of this is so important. Well, that's the end of the, that's the end of the theological piece. Now we come to the significance of the doctrine of the resurrection. It's not offered just as another miracle. It's not even offered as a matter of fact, something that's provable or verifiable. No, it's offered as a testimony of our Christian hope, a hope which, because it lies outside of our normal experience of history, confronts and challenges the systems of thought which limit the vis our vision of the future in accordance with what seems probable. The resurrection is a possibility which lies beyond the probable. And that's the definition of faith itself. Is it irrational? Well, the skeptic would say it's irrational. But we would say it's transrational. It's transfigured. 
It's transcendent. It's all those wonderful trans words, which means beyond. It's beyond what we know. It's beyond what we can see. It's beyond what we, what we are so used to. And yet, it's real. That's probably the key. It's real. It's as real as anything. And yet, we cannot prove it. We cannot explain it. And as you can see from my sermon, we have a hard time even describing it. So it's, it's what Berger calls, this, this wonderful Peter Berger, a sociologist back in the 60s, called a rumor of angels. Even in our secular world, even in our world of computers, our world of CDs and DVDs, I almost said VHSs, but DVDs, even in our modern technological world, there exists still a rumor of angels. Somehow we know that there's something more out there. We don't know what it is, but we know it's out there. And sometimes we experience it, and sometimes we experience it without quite realizing it. I know, for example, that when I read great literature, when I hear great poetry like John Donne or Milton or, or C.T.S. Eliot, when I hear that kind of thing, I feel myself, I feel that myself lifted up, ennobled elevated by the words. I don't know why that happens, but it just does. And that's a sense of the transcendence, something beyond what I normally experience being made known to me through the work of great literature. There are certain kinds of music that do that. In a little while, you're going to hear a beautiful performance of Handel, I Know That My Redeemer Liveth. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of music written. As you hear it performed, as it will be by the choir. Listen to it. Allow yourself to be lifted up and given majestic and jubilant feeling. That's a truth of that music. It's a truth that we cannot prove or explain, but there it is. Every Sunday when I come here, I always arrive early, very early, and I always park out front. If it's a warm day, I get out. I love to look over the plains out there, the encampment ground, the parade ground, the, the Valley Forge scenery. I love to see it in its stillness, in its quietness. And then suddenly it becomes transcendent. Time itself goes away. I feel myself part of something much bigger than myself. I can almost hear the colonial soldiers out there rattling their silverware together getting ready for breakfast. I can also almost hear von Steuben screaming at his troops to line up straight. It's a marvelous moment when time itself is suspended and lifted up. And when I come into the church, when I come into the church, I turn on the lights and I unlock the doors. And I love to stand in the church quietly, in a quiet church with nobody in it. And I think sometimes that's the church when it's most sacred, in its quietness, in its stillness a mute testimony to all the clergy that served here, all the people who have come here, the love that put this building together, the love that wanted to make it a beautiful place. And it's a beautiful thing to see. I think churches are beautiful in two situations, when there's nobody in them and when they're loaded to the gills. That's when the church is most beautiful, when it's quiet, contemplative, filled with the presence of God, unspoken but very powerful, and when it's filled with voices and hearts and souls yearning to hear God's word again. That's something that I can't explain, but I know it to be true. I love my wife. I love my family. I even love my dog. Well, I like my dog. I can't go too far, but I can't prove that. If somebody asked me to prove that I love my wife, I couldn't do it. Nobody can. I can't even explain why I love my wife. And yet, there it is. And it reminds me of, of Rogers and Hammerstein. Most things remind me of Rogers and Hammerstein. But I remember that extraordinary musical, South Pacific. And if you know the story, if you know the story of the musical, the, one of the protagonists falls in love with a, with a beautiful nurse on a South Pacific island. And he can't explain it. She's younger than he is, but when he sees her across a crowded room, he knows that he is in love. And he begins the song that he sings, 
with a preface. Who can explain it? Who can tell you why? Fools give you reasons. Wise men never try. And then the music swells up, and there he goes. Oh, enchanted evening. Sings the song. I won't torture you by singing it. <laughs> but think about what he says. Who can explain it? Who can tell you why? Fools give you reasons. Wise men never try. Well, Jesus has walked us through this. He's walked us through this when he confronted the puzzled and confused visionaries of his resurrection. He says, first of all, look at the cost. Look at my scars. Look at my wounds. And know the price that God has paid for your salvation. Then he says, open your eyes to the scripture. Unlock the scripture, the testimony, the countless witnesses who have seen God at work in the world. And finally he says, remember what I said. Remember that I told you when I was with you that the Son of Man must suffer many things, die, and on the third day rise again. And when we remember those things, we open our eyes to the presence of God through the risen and standing with us, Lord, even though most of the time it's unrecognized. I believe that the presence of God is available to all of us. And remember that Jesus never called us to be ones to prove the resurrection or even to explain it. We are all called to be witnesses of what we have seen and of what we have heard and of what it has meant to our lives. Amen. Well, hello, Miss Stella. Now you'll read page 21 together. Yes. This time the godparents would also come forward, please. Our service continues on page 21 of your bulletin. Of course, you all will read in bold. The candidate for holy baptism is now presented. All together. I present, I present Stella, Stella Rose, Rose Whitaker for the sacrament of baptism. Wilt thou on thy part take heed that this child whom thou dost present be brought up in the Christian faith and life. Wilt thou, by thy prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, by God's help. Dost thou renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them all. Dost thou renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them all. Dost thou renounce all sinful desires that draw thee from the love of God? I renounce them all. Dost thou turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as thy Savior? I do. Dost thou put thy whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Dost thou promise to follow and obey him as thy Lord and Master? I do. Will ye who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person 
in her life in Christ. We will. Dearly beloved, let us join with those who are now committing themselves to Christ Jesus and here renew our own baptismal covenant. Dost thou believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Dost thou believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Dost thou believe in God the Holy Ghost? I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Wilt thou continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Wilt thou persevere in resisting evil, and whenever thou dost fall into sin, repent and return unto the Lord? Wilt thou proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ Jesus? Wilt thou seek and serve Christ in all men, loving thy neighbor as thyself? Wilt thou strive for justice and peace among all men, and respect the dignity of every person? Let us now pray for Stella, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open her heart to thy grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with thy holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of thy holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to thy love. Bring her to the fullness of thy peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, thy Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who liveth and reigneth now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. We give thee thanks, Almighty God, for the gift of water, over which thy Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation, 
through which thou didst lead the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, being manifested thereby as the Messiah, the Christ, who leadeth us through, the pres through his precious death and mighty resurrection from the bondage of sin unto life everlasting. We give thee thanks, O Father, for the water of baptism, in which we are buried with Christ in his death, by which we partake of his resurrection, through which we are made regenerate by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to thy Son, we bring into his fellowship them that come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray thee, by thy Holy Spirit, that those who are cleansed from sin and made regenerate here may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior, to whom with thee and the same Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Name this child. Stella Rose Whitaker. Stella, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Stella, thou art sealed by the Holy Ghost in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. We most heartily thank Thee, O Heavenly Father, that by water and the Holy Spirit Thou hast bestowed upon Stella the forgiveness of sin and hast raised her unto the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in Thy Holy Spirit. Give unto her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love thee, and the gift of joy and wonder in all thy works. Amen. Amen. Now I have something to present to you. This is a baptismal candle that she can actually play with. And so as she plays with this, may she let her light shine so that others may see her good works and give glory to her Father who is in heaven. And we also have your baptismal certificate as well as certificates for both of the godparents. And these certificates have some wonderful 
examples and ideas of how to best serve as a godparent and how to pray for your God, God child on a daily basis. If you'll turn and face your new church family. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right in our founding duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, but chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy and gracious Father, in thine infinite love thou didst make us for thyself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, thou didst mercifully send Jesus Christ, thine only begotten and eternal Son, to share our humanity, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us unto thee, who art the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and made there an offering to himself in obedience to thy will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed unto suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks unto thee, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his blessed death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we offer unto thee these gifts. Sanctify them by thy Holy Spirit, that they may be for thy people the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Do thou likewise sanctify us, thy servants, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve thee in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary and all thy saints into the joy of thine eternal kingdom. All this we ask through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Be the bread of heaven, and call upon the name of the Lord, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve my soul into everlasting life.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto everlasting life.
The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.